This episode of Weekly Weird News is sponsored by HelloFresh and by Quip. Well, let's begin things this week by providing a brief update to last week's top story. Papa John's very weird and unsettling local TV interview in which he said that he ate 40 pizzas in the last 30 days and looked like he had rubbed each of those 40 pizzas all over his face and hair. It gives us no pleasure to report now that the Papa John interview appears to have been the final straw in a marriage that was already on the rocks because following the interview, Mama John, real named Annette Cox, filed for divorce from yeah. Papa John. Uh, from the sound of things, the marriage was already on the rocks and the two have been separated since earlier this year which all makes sense given the shame and embarrassment Papa John has brought upon his family. Plus all those rumors of him spending his free time getting drunk with chicken heads. That probably didn't help. Uh, the soon-to-be former Mama John stands to make a, quite a bit of money out of this divorce since Papa John is still, despite all the scandal and disgrace, worth about half a billion dollars along with lots of real estate property. Uh, which will be divided up between the two of them. Yeah, she'll be all right. Mm -hmm. uh, Papa John this week also sued the advertising firm Laundry Service, which is the company that Papa John's, the company, hired to give Papa John, the person, uh, the racial sensitivity training that caused all these problems. Yeah. Because during that training is when Papa dropped the infamous N-bomb that cost him his chairman position at the company. And Papa John is now suing them because he claims that Laundry Service leaked the secretly recorded audio of that call to the press. He also alleges that Laundry Service tried to extort Papa John's, the company, demanding $6 million or they would leak the audio. So that's all very exciting. Yes. We look forward to whatever comes next in the Papa John saga. It doesn't look like it's letting up anytime soon. Mm -hmm. Well, and another update to last week's news. Remember how we told you about a Canadian newspaper advertisement about the local Christmas parade, which instead of advertising pictures with Santa, instead advertised pictures with Satan? Well, we were actually pretty on board with the idea of pictures with Satan, and luckily, we're not the only ones who felt that way. Because a local Vancouver Island man decided to go ahead and attend that parade dressed as Satan himself. Just in time. Perfect for the season. Mm -hmm. and actually, from the looks of it, multiple attendees showed up in various different interpretations of the Dark Lord. Everyone had a great time. That's the thing about Satan. Unlike Santa, who's... We all just... We just let Coca-Cola come in and define how we picture... Jolly old Saint Nick. Mm -hmm. Satan has not been co-opted by the brands yet, and so there's there's a variety of different ways to represent Satan. Yeah, and uh, yeah, lots of fun photos with locals were taken. Everyone seems to have had a great time, yeah. and the whole pictures with Satan gaff. It was just a fun little local meme. Yeah. Now you'll recall that another one of last week's headlines involved a town in Tennessee, USA, uh, just straight up canceling its Christmas parade because of a float featuring a rainbow flag that generated controversy and threats to the point where they just had shut the whole thing down. Yeah. So it's refreshing to see that our neighbors to the north aren't nearly as uptight as some of us are down here. Can you imagine if a town in the south oh, God. had a, uh, accidentally printed pictures with Satan in the local newspaper? You'd never hear the end A animal. holy war. Truly mm -hmm. a holy war. Well, the people in Virginia, the, the representatives in Virginia, they probably canceled it because they're upset they couldn't show up in blackface again. It's a time-honored tradition. It's the only thing about Christmas that really still excites me as a grown adult is yeah. getting out the shoe polish and just going to the Christmas parade in full blackface. Yeah. And you're taking that away from me for your political correctness? Come on now. That Vancouver town, they would have let Justin Trudeau show up however he wanted to. Yeah. It's just this once. <laughs> One day a year, Mr. Trudeau. <laughs> uh, moving on now to this week's news, though. You're going to die. Are you okay with that? Probably not, but uh, over in Korea, they've come up with a way for people from all walks of life to confront death without actually dying. Just do the whole funeral thing, coffin and all, but while you're still alive, you should enjoy yeah. your death. Uh, and yeah, it's entirely possible we've talked about South Korean mock funerals at some point in the past five years making this show, but if we have, it's totally lost to the sands of time, and that's just the way the news goes. Yeah. It's, uh, increasingly, I'll read something and be like, I feel like... Swear to God, I've, I don't know, I get a lot of deja vu finding stories for this show. I know we've covered the uh, Central and South American stories yeah. about them posing the bodies. Yeah, Puerto doing, Rican. Doing, uh, oh, Puerto Rican? Yeah. Uh, doing fun stuff that they enjoyed while they were alive, like riding motorcycles yeah. and playing video games. But uh, this, is a, this is different, though. Yeah. This is, this is funerals for the living. And anyway, in case you're not familiar with South Korean mock funerals, it's a service that the Hyowon Healing Center in Seoul has been offering since 2012, with many similar services opening up throughout the country. It's been reported on repeatedly since then, but most recently by Reuters last month. Now, why, you ask, would anyone want to participate in a dramatic pre-enactment of their own death ceremony? 
Um, well, for starters, South Korea's suicide rate is very high, especially compared to other developed countries. And anywhere that the suicide rate is that high, you can also find a sizable chunk of the population that's not particularly happy with their life. Yeah, additionally, South Korea is pretty notorious for having terrible work-life balance, an epidemic of loneliness, and a huge social stigma on seeking mental health care. So the appeal of mock funerals start to make a bit more sense when you understand that a lot of people in South Korea and the rest of the world, too, aren't very happy with their lives and may think about death a lot. Additionally, people who are terminally ill might want to prepare for the end with a little rehearsal. Mock funerals allow people to actually act out their death, or at least the formal parts of it, and come to terms with it better than simply in their own minds. Plus, a lot of people die with a lot of unresolved baggage that they probably wish they'd dealt with sooner, so that helps. Yes, yeah, so these mock funerals, which are free, are done in groups. You basically got a big dimly lit room with a few dozen participants, all dressed in funeral robes, each with their own personal coffin. They get their funeral portraits taken, they write their last will and testament, and then they lie down in a closed coffin in absolute silence for 10 minutes. Well, not absolute silence, because while they're in there, a guy in a black robe walks around with a hammer pretending to hammer the coffins shut, just to get a little bit of added effect. Yeah, just uh, if you weren't scared before, maybe yeah. you'll be scared now, because wait, what if he's really nailing this shut? Yeah, I think being in the coffin alone in complete darkness and silence, not creepy enough. We need a Korean Grim Reaper to come around and, like, Nail the coffins shut. We have these in America. They're called sens sensory deprivation tanks, and they're for rich people. They are. Yeah. It's a good way to meditate, I guess. I've never done I it. did not like... I did a send-up once. I did not enjoy it. Oh. It gets so quiet in there that um, you start to, like... Hallucinate? Like, no, you start to just, like, you can hear everything. Like, every time I blinked, the sound of my eyes opening and closing was like... <laughs> Ugh. Did not like it. I am just an organism. Get yeah. me out of here. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, it sounds like this experience, the one in Korea, has positive effects for the participants, though. They realize that people would be sad if they were gone and that a lot of their problems aren't as bad as they think. One 28-year-old man said in his most recent reporting on this, quote, Everyone lives in such a hot-blooded, intense manner. You think of the person next to you as a competitor, you must be, not a companion. When I was in the coffin, I wondered what the point of that was. I want to let people know that they matter and that someone else would be so sad if they were gone. And that happiness is in the present. Uh, another participant, a 75-year-old woman, said, This provides an opportunity to think about which way is the best way to go. Instead of living without thinking, once you become conscious of death and experience it, you undertake a new approach to life. And the head of the program, Jong Yong Moon, said, People like to think they have forever with their families, and they put off asking for forgiveness or reconciling with estranged family members, but we don't have forever. That's why I think this experience is so important. We can apologize and reconcile sooner and live the rest of our lives happily. Yeah, oh, okay. Unfortunately, this practice does not seem to have caught on over here in the States. But if you're feeling down in the dumps, you could always, you know, pick up some wood down at the local Home Depot and DIY your own mock funeral coffin or buy it from Costco. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, if you're feeling extra adventurous, though, you could visit your local funeral parlor and sneak into one of the display coffins when no one's looking. Your time in the coffin, along with the rush that you'll get from trying not to get caught, it'll surely help you find a new lease on life. Or you could attend, uh, just this week, they had the um, ceremony for burying the uh, unrecovered bodies in Los Angeles County. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah the that's... people that don't have families yeah, or yeah, unidentified. The, the John Doe's. It's a mass burial of uh, their ashes. Yeah, that's morbid. Yeah. Yeah, don't do the, the mock uh, crematory experience. Yeah. Well, that one know. goes wrong a lot, I'm sure. I mean, if there was a way to do it with just, like, those pretend flames, like uh, those fake... Fireplaces? Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Sure. A little, just a little bit warm? Just surrounded by TVs with the Netflix Yule Log on? Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of unusual things over in Asia, we've got yet another real-life supervillain for you this week, this time out of Japan. And of course, when we talk about supervillains, it's almost always someone just non-consensually putting some disgusting substance onto the bodies of strangers. And fortunately, in the case of Japan's infamous mayonnaise man, the substance is mayonnaise and not diarrhea like the guy in L.A. and the other guy up in Toronto. Almost as gross, though. I fucking hate mayo. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, mayo is slightly less terrible than diarrhea unless you're like Ricky and you just really, really, really hate mayonnaise. I'm going to have to take a shower after both and I both, I think they both smell bad, so miss me with the mayo. That's what I tell the guy who makes my subs at the sub shop. Yeah. Get a whistle out. <laughs> And don't cut it with the knife that you cut the other sandwiches with. It's oh, got you, mayo all over it. You don't even want to, Okay. <laughs> One drop rule when it comes to and mayo. And I know aioli is just fancy mayo. You're not fooling anybody. Yeah, it's great. Love mm. to just dunk my fries in it. Oh. Yeah. 
Manny's man's original crime spree dates back to 2012, when in a string of at least eight incidents around Sapporo, he approached uniformed schoolgirls and threw mayonnaise on their uniforms before running away. He was eventually caught and arrested based on his description, though it's unclear what exactly his punishment was for these very unusual series of crimes. Whatever the case, though, Manet's man's condiments crime spree ended, at least for a while, though two years later in 2014, another Japanese man, this time in Osaka, was also caught after a series of copycat mayonnaise attacks. Well, all, uh, all these years later, the original mayonnaise man... Uh, he was back to his old ways recently, back in Hokkaido. In October, a young, uniformed female student on her way to school was approached by a man who spit a mouthful of some sort of liquid all over her uniform. Oh. Now, interestingly, upon examination by police, the liquid was found to not be mayonnaise, but rather salad dressing. Mm. Though it is unclear if it was a mayo-based salad dressing. They put mayo in everything. A lot of them are. Now, police conducted DNA analysis on the liquid. And that DNA was matched with that of the original mayonnaise man, uh -oh. who, upon being apprehended, reportedly said to police, I thought I would find a high school girl and dirty her uniform before going to work. It's a very supervillain thing to say. Yeah. Also, he just straight up admitted the crime. Yeah. But uh, I think we should take a lot longer to look into this. It happens see. a lot in Japan. Maybe maybe it's just it's cases yeah. I've looked at. But, in like, Japanese criminals oftentimes just admit to the crime. They... They're like, well, I'm caught. Yeah, it was me. Why would I commit a crime without wanting to take responsibility for it? Yeah, they're, they're very honorable while being dishonorable. Mm -hmm. Speaking of villains, you might consider Michael Jackson to be one of those villains, depending on which of the stories about him you believe. The fact that Michael Jackson may very well have been a child molester while also recording some of the best bops of the 20th, 20th century, it's a tough thing to grapple with, especially when you hear the music yeah. all the time. How could I not love this fucking song? God yeah. damn it. The one-two punch of Michael Jackson potentially being a pedo, and John Landis directing the greatest movie, music video of all time, Thriller, crosses streams that I am not happy with. Yeah, it's very unfortunate. But uh, here's a new coping method for all of you out there. What if Michael Jackson did, in fact, do all the bad stuff he's alleged to have done, but he only did it because aliens made him do it? There you go. We're not sure anyone actually sincerely believes that, but that's the premise of an upcoming stage musical about Jackson called For the Love of Glove. <laughs> What a title. Oh. Here's what The Hollywood Reporter said about this. Written by L.A. playwright and filmmaker Julian Nitzberg, For the Love of a Glove tells the story of what happens after a group of aliens shaped like bedazzled gloves crash land in Jackson's hometown of Gary, Indiana. Quote, It turns out the glove can give people magical musical talent if it drinks their blood and has part of their body inside of it. Nitzberg, 54, tells Rambling Reporter, Quote, But it can only feed on virgin boy blood. End quote. Wow. Naturally, one alien glove attaches itself to a young Michael Jackson, who eventually learns that he can't feed all five alien gloves himself, so he starts bringing boys home. If these gloves don't look like the hamburger helper, there's a huge missed opportunity. They, they do. It's the only thing that I can think of as when you think of an anthropomorphic glove. They, they, they pretty much look like bedazzled hamburger helpers, but, but with all five fingers. The hamburger helper hand, notoriously... It's only got, like, three fingers, right? Yeah, because it's harder to animate properly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's why it's like that with all cartoons. Yeah. So. Anyways, if that's not weird enough, it sounds like the whole thing is going to be performed by puppets in the Japanese bunraku style. Also, the glove is performed by actor Jerry Minor, and, and it's named Thrillilla. Get it? Thriller. Thriller. Yeah. And uh, the play won't just be about Michael Jackson feeding alien gloves the blood of young virginal boys. Quote, Nitzberg, the director, describes the musical as a layered look at the entire landscape of Jackson's life, including themes of racism, religious oppression, Jackson was raised a Jehovah's Witness, cultural appropriation, and a reported rivalry with Donny Osmond, who was accused of copying Jackson's ensembles at fo and photo shoots. And apparently additional characters will include Emmanuel Lewis, Corey Feldman, and Bubbles the Chimp. So it's a, it's a whole, you know, wide-spectrum look at Michael Jackson's life, but with the addition of... Um pedophilic aliens in the form of gloves. It explains everything. Yeah. Nice. Anyway, while this may sound very weird and you know, maybe insensitive <laughs> on its surface, uh, director Julian Nitzberg said, we should be in process culture where we process how fucked up people are and understand what made them that way. I think there's a collective trauma of everyone who grew up as a Jackson 5 fan and a Michael fan. This is a way to process that in a fun way while helping people understand all of the really fucked up stuff that affected Michael's life. Uh, he also says that 
The idea started 17 years ago when he was approached to write a Michael Jackson biopic and wasn't able to do so because he refused to do a sanitized take on Michael Jackson's life that didn't address the child abuse allegations. And uh, yeah, this is certainly a way to finally tell the story he wanted to tell. I can't wait for the next play where Jimmy Savile's bell-bottom pants yeah. cause him to uh, <laughs> take corpses out of body coolers and have sex with them in the basement of hospitals in... Come on, Michael, I just need one little boy. One little virginal boy. No, I don't want him, Mr. Glove. No, you gotta do it. You're gonna lose all your talent if you don't feed the glove. That is clearly Jennifer Lopez and not Michael Jackson's glove. Uh, Uh. Anyways, moving on to politics, though. We have definitely, at some point, talked about Congressman Duncan Hunter of San Diego's 50th District, uh, and you're already probably aware of him. He's the congressman who, around three years ago, came under scrutiny for a variety of campaign finance violations, including allegedly spending $1,300 of his campaign funds on Steam games. He's also the guy who vaped during a congressional hearing while arguing that vaping should be allowed on airplanes. He's cool. prolific. Yeah, so Duncan Hunter is quite a character, though it's important to point out that while spending, you know, around 1300 1500 whatever dollars on Steam games is excessive, um, that's just 1%, or actually less than 1%, of the $150,000 in campaign funds they spent on all sorts of shit, basically using it as a piggy bank. Vacations, groceries, gas, dentistry, clothes, tuition, and much more were paid for with campaign funds. And this week... Representative and gamer Duncan Hunter pleaded guilty to misusing campaign funds and now faces a maximum penalty of five years in prison and a fine of up to $250,000. But he lived that life. He did. Just like that executive from Style Hall. Mm -hmm. He never had to worry about not being able to afford video games. Mm -hmm. Uh, He's also, he's resigning from Congress in January because there's a rule where... If you're convicted of a felony, you can't actually vote in congressional sessions. There goes the vaping congressman. Yeah. Uh, yeah, as much as we would all love to have a gamer president, uh, Duncan Hunter's crimes here, they, they've they surely set gamers back in that regard mm-hmm. by years at least. Yeah. Here you have the most high-profile gamer lawmaker in American history, and he's a big old thief. Yeah. Well, the problem Does is not he, reflect well. he came in and thought that he should be rich right off the bat. And no, you get rich in politics by spending years in your position and eventually taking on special interests. Yeah, D- Duncan, the way to do this would have been... I you mean, don't spend taxpayer dollars, you spend the special interest dollars. Where is Valve based out of? Washington? Well, whatever. He is down in San Diego. I mean, Blizzard's super close. You want to? You, you become interested in gaming lobbying. So yeah. you, start, you start visiting the studios being like, hey, look, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be on your side. In gaming Congress. does not cause violence, you know, I'm happy to say. Every six months when they try to blame violence on the games, I will be in your corner. But hey, if you got any, you know, if you got any like free stuff. Or money. Although I think technically you still have to count those as campaign donations. But if they're like, if they're Steam games or anything like that, I think as long as you list them on taxes, you're good. I'm no lawyer. But there, I'm sure there was a right way to do this where it, he wouldn't have gotten in trouble. Yeah, you can, you can be a millionaire in politics. No problem. Yeah. There's plenty of ways to cover uh, it up or do it Most of them do it. Yeah. Most of them get away with it. Yeah. Well, he'll make a lot of money on his book about this. Yeah. Uh, anyways, in 2020 election news, Joe Biden has yet again demonstrated for all the world to see that he may not be totally equipped for the job he's applying for. God damn it. His most recent gaffe happened this week at a campaign stop in Iowa where an elderly voter used the Q&A part of the event to basically say that Joe Biden's mental abilities might not be up to task and also point out correctly... <laughs> That Biden's son Hunter getting a job in Ukraine while his dad was vice president was maybe a bit unethical. Yeah. And look, these are criticisms that Biden is going to keep getting, and he should probably learn how to respond to them properly. But in this case, his response was not good. Yeah, but very, at the very, very least, not good. At the very least, we could understand what he was saying this time. I don't know. Well, there were a few things he said where... Yeah, he couldn't. It's, you know, people are arguing about what he said because he talks like he has a mouthful of marbles. Mm -hmm. So the actual clip is actually worth watching in full. We we recommend it because as easy as it is to dismiss this voter as a troll or a plant, uh, in the video it very much seems like he's being sincere about not being a Republican. And he's also pretty damn polite during the whole exchange. Biden, on the other hand, calls him a damn liar, uh, challenges the man to an IQ test, 
and also challenges the man to a push-up test. Hey, you, Jack, let's get on the ground and see who's in better shape. It is a very hostile little exchange they have. Additionally, while the Biden camp denies this, it sure as shit sounds like Biden calls the man fat at one point. Yeah, the audience visibly reacts, and I don't think they would if he was saying facts and not fat. Yeah. The Uh, kids in the background are like, damn. Yeah. Now, whether or not he did call the man fat, uh, he's clearly fucking pissed off during this entire exchange. He acts like a total dick to this guy who's raising some very valid concerns. Uh, yeah, not good, because if you think this guy was out of line, I got bad news for you, buddy. There's a guy that you're going to have to, like, debate a bunch of times <laughs> if you make it to the end of this who's, like, way more of a dick about stuff. Well, we're going to see the first presidential push-up contest. I, I, if that happens, I hope, and look, I don't actually hope this, wink, wink, it would be a terrible thing if this happened, but if Joe Biden and Donald Trump actually did a push-up contest and both of them collapsed and died on stage, that would be tragic. I really hope that doesn't happen. Yeah. Well, Donald Trump, it's hard to do push-ups when your belly is uh, so far it's down Actually, it's easy to do push-ups. You just, just breathe in and out. Bloop, bloop. You know? uh, also, everyone in that room, aside from like the kids off to the side, is like at least 60 years old. And that's being generous. Mm-hmm. So please, people, our viewers, uh, most of whom we know are... Uh, yeah, 20s and 30s. Please vote. Yeah. Especially in the primaries. Please. Do you think that older voters really like him because it's kind of like his speech patterns are kind of like a regional dialect? Where, like, if you're born and raised in Louisiana, you can, like, immediately decipher the Louisiana accent in a way that, you know, someone from the coast wouldn't you're really saying understand. saying there's an old accent? Yeah, there's an old accent, which is just a lot of mumbling. But if you're also old, you can kind of decipher the mumbling. There may be something to that. Yeah. I don't know. Plus, they have their hearing aids all cranked up. They're hearing things we can't even we can't even perceive. I mean, I would I would love. No one has been able to do this yet, and it weirds me out. Just like, actually interview some of these fucking people and say, why do you like Joe Biden so much? Why? I like his policy positions. What are his policy? Which positions? ones? I don't know actually, but he was the vice president. Uh, I like the I like when he it's tried to like baffling. I like when he tried to get uh, venues and co- companies shut down in the '90s because their people were taking drugs at them. Like the, the only cool thing Joe Biden ever did was in like the 2012 election when he debated Paul Ryan and was just like a total dick to him. Also, the time he debated Sarah Palin in the 2008 primary and was a total dick to her. Yeah, like those were good. But he was also like his mental capacity was clearly, obviously, demonstrably better than it is in 2019. Yes, it's over, Joe. Uh, meanwhile, in the Democratic field, Andrew Yang, who we have a lot fewer gripes with than Biden, had an interesting campaign moment this week when a campaign volunteer asked Yang to spray whipped cream into his mouth, which he happily obliged, followed by another campaign staffer also getting down on their knees and getting a big mouthful of Andrew Yang whipped cream. Now, that's all before his campaign manager appears to try to stop this silliness because the cameras are on, Yang. What are you doing? It looks like you're ejaculating into these young men's mouths. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. I actually appreciate how little fucks Andrew Yang. He's like, oh, yeah, it's fun. Whatever. Yeah. Let me spray the y'all. Delightful. But yes, it does look strange. (laughs) It's a bit weird, but yeah, at least Yang doesn't act like an angry old man when people ask valid questions about why he should get their vote. So that's a plus. Yeah. I mean, if this was like 15 years ago, Andrew Yang putting whipped cream into younger men's mouths while they take a knee in front of him, Mm -hmm. it might be... Might get some traction. Yeah. But we got, there's just so much going on right now. It's like, sort of just like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I mean, he's also not like. Just bros being bros. <laughs> he's not polling, uh, you know, significantly well. So yeah. it's like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. They're having a good time. Yeah. He's, what, he's you've going never, up to the college whippet crowd. What, you've never, like, gotten down at crotch level of one of your bros and had him spray whipped cream into your mouth and just fill it up with the white stuff? Yeah. As a way of celebration? Yeah. Getting it, for, clearly getting it from someone that you admire. Cream me, boss. Ah, it's so good. Yeah. I hope he keeps doing this. Yes, that should be his Pete Buttigieg dance. Yeah. He just goes out to crowds and just gets out. <laughs> it's like a guar <laughs> show. He's just spraying everyone down. He gets a giant, like, molded whipped cream can. Yeah. Shh. Andrew, I, you Spray know. Spray it on the crowd, Andrew. Mr. Yang, you don't have my vote currently. But if you come out at, I don't know, I don't even know if he qualifies for the next debate. But if you qualify for the next debate and you come out on stage... With a bottle of Ready Whip, and you cream the audience. Yeah. You got my vote, 100%. Yeah. And you're going to get heart. the, and typically, especially these days, the Gallagher crowd leans right. They do. You could bring him over to the other side. <laughs> I love the guy. 
It gets uh, a little crowd messy. No one's doing prop comedy with fucking food anymore. They need to give out uh, Andrew Yang uh, ponchos for the people in the front row. <laughs> Oh, oh, God. Good shit. Yeah. Anyways, it's time now for some sponsors, starting with HelloFresh. HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit delivery service, bringing you easy seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients right to your door. All you have to do is cook and enjoy. HelloFresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality, regardless of your comfort in the kitchen. Say goodbye to endless grocery store trips and takeout food, because HelloFresh has you covered. Break out of your dinner rut with 20-plus seasonal chef-curated recipes to choose from each week. There's something for everyone, from family recipes to calorie smart and vegetarian, and fun menu series like Hall of Fame and Kraft Burgers. Good thing about this, if you get mayo, you can just throw it away. Or give it to a friend who enjoys mayo. Some of us like mayo, Ricky. Yeah, well, you can have all my mayo. And and the great thing about HelloFresh is... Uh, you you just get down on your knees, and you just, I'll open up the mayo packet, and I'll just squirt it right into your mouth. Uh, wh- however you may feel about mayo, the HelloFresh has so many menu options each week that you can go through... You know, you get to choose which ones you're going to get, and you can go through and you can you can weed out the ones that have yeah. a little too much mayo for your taste. Yeah. Anyways, you can get nine free meals uh, with HelloFresh by going to HelloFresh.com slash WeeklyWeird9 and using the code WeeklyWeird9. Again, that is nine free meals by going to HelloFresh.com slash WeeklyWeird9 and using that promo code WeeklyWeird9. And the episode is sponsored by Quip. Put it in your mouth. That's a toothbrush that we both use every day. Mm-hmm. The holiday shopping season is here, and this year, your gift can start next year's good habit with Quip. Quip is something that's sure to put a smile on everyone's mouth because it's dental care they'll actually want to use every day. That's why Quip is the perfect, thoughtful, and practical gift. With an electric toothbrush, refillable floss, and toothpaste, all intentionally designed to make good habits simple. The Quip electric toothbrush has sensitive sonic vibrations and a timer with 30-second pulses to guide your routine, and the Quip floss dispenser has pre-marked strings so you always have the right amount. Plus, Quip delivers brush heads, floss, and toothpaste refills every three months. Join over three million happy customers and check everyone off your gift list right now with Quip. Just go to getquip.com slash weeklyweird to save on gift sets and to get your first refill free with a refill plan. That's your first refill free at getquip. That's G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash weeklyweird. Getquip.com slash weeklyweird. It is a good, it's a good Christmas gift. I love it. Yeah. I highly recommend it. Yes. Anyway. Uh, let's get into headlines, starting with Florida couple buys baby bouncer at Goodwill, finds semi-automatic rifle inside. Hey, they got more value than they bargained for. They certainly did. And yeah, this. in addition to this being on its face the most absurd American story, uh, the family, they reportedly, it was like, it's like, oh, they, they were like, hell yeah, free gun. And the cops showed up and they're like, yeah, this is Florida, so, like, you can keep it. Finders keepers, that's the <laughs> yeah, law. they're just like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. We're not going to look too much into, like, how this happened. It's your gun now. Yeah. You bought it, you <laughs> Legally, we it. can't. We can't say a damn thing. Yeah, and the family, they're just like, all right, Junior, Junior's already got his first gun, and he's not even born yet. Hell yeah. We're going to save it for him when he turns, I don't know what the legal age, but... Uh, but oh, you can yeah. shoot a gun at, like, any age in Florida. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah, just, you know, put that in his crib next to him when he comes out. There was a story not too long ago from my local town where a kid, a guy took his kid to the shooting range and his son shot him accidentally and killed him. Yeah, yeah that, that happens every once in a while. Either that or he killed the kid. I can't remember which one. I remember there was one where they, uh, they gave a kid, I don't know what state this was in, but it was somewhere where you can, like... At gun shows, demonstrate uh, full auto weapons. Yeah, but it was uh, they gave like a fucking six year old an Uzi, which has crazy kickback in yeah. automatic mode, and just pfft, shot back into his own head. And they're like, "Oh, how how could anyone have predicted this would happen? Who could have known?" Well, to be fair, the kid was dressed like Yosemite Sam, and they thought he was an adult. Yeah, yeah. cool. Cool. Uh, here's some cool news. Tim Allen complains about not being able to use the N word on the View. But he loves Papa John's pizza. I just don't see it. I, it the, the, the recipe has changed. I yeah, love he, how uh, the, the headline on all these makes it seem like he specifically wanted to use it on The View. I mean, maybe he did. Yeah. I don't know. It's like... I can't do it with Whoopi sitting right there. It's... These, Tim Allen has, like, enough money for, like, a thousand lifetimes. Yeah. He is still quite successful. He's on a show that is currently on TV. He still... He does stand-up tours... He's fucking Buzz they, Lightyear. He's doing great. Yeah, he's Buzz Lightyear. He is set for a million lifetimes, but he's pissed that, uh, you know, if he wanted to say the N-word, people would get mad at him. I've got all the money in the world, but I can't do the one thing I want to do. 
What do you get the person that has everything? And he's just like, he's like, you can't even go back and read Richard Pryor's book anymore. It's like, yeah, you can. Yes, you can. You can absolutely read Richard Pryor's book, watch his stand-up, because Richard Pryor was black. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe it was some, uh, the the content was a bit blue, but Richard Pryor saying the N-word is different than... Tim Allen saying the N-word. And all also, the, you're a fucking snitch. Everyone forgets about yeah, this, but Tim Allen's a, a fucking snitch. Yeah, he got away with uh, smuggling loads of cocaine. Yeah. Yeah. And he he talked his way out of it by, like, sending all of his friends to prison for life. Yeah. Fuck you, Tim Allen. <laughs> you fucking snitch. Everyone forgets about that. Mm-hmm. It never comes up. Well. Anyways. Moving on. Arizona teen gets stuck trying to sneak into own home through chimney. Well, it's festive. You better watch out. Yeah, this teen, a little bit of a wild child, they apparently snuck out of the house to go party. In through the chimney? No. Oh. They snuck out normal. When they got back late at night, all the doors were locked. So they had the bright idea to, uh, she's like, oh, I'll just use the chimney. If that fat fuck can get down there, yeah. certainly I can. That did not occur to them. I thought this was common knowledge, but chimneys are not straight up and down. They have the, like, brakes on them. <laughs> yeah, for, because otherwise... Uh, shit would be falling into your chimney all the goddamn time. Mm-hmm. And also... Like children. Yeah, like children. <laughs> so, yeah, she went down there, she got stuck, and, uh, you know, they had to... It was a whole operation. They had to get her out. Very embarrassing. She learned yeah. her lesson for sure. No, she probably didn't. She's probably, like, the talk of the school the next day. Sure. Wow. Epic. <laughs> Whoa, what was it like? Horrifying. Yeah. Horrifying. I thought I was going to die. Yeah. Yeah. Cool story. Tired of traffic jams, Indonesian man builds his own helicopter. Oh, did it look like Da Vinci's? A little bit. Cool. He, he's just like, yeah, I learned about helicopters on YouTube. And, uh, you know, you just buy parts on the internet. <laughs> cool. I, he hasn't gotten it to go up in the air yet. And I would not at all trust, I, think, I mean, normal helicopters, the ones built by helicopter companies, are dangerous as fuck yeah. to fly. So I don't know about this guy's backyard the DIY helicopter. Well, luckily he won't be able to get it high enough off the ground to actually yeah. do any damage. But this is uh, this is like when Mr. Garrison invented like the uh, butt plug machine. Yeah. Because he's like the damn traffic and the damn airlines. This guy just fucking hates traffic. He he built his own flying machine. Now to be fair, all of that stress and anxiety that comes along with the traffic, the problems that he's had, it was probably very therapeutic to build this contraption. Yeah. That's the thing. You just got to have a hobby. Yeah, like Rod Stewart and his train set. That's true. Yeah. I, I agree with that. Mm-hmm. Which like, looks amazing. Get, work with I know me. we covered it, but it is. I watched, uh, or I saw the pictures again, and I was just like, yeah. this is impressive. Yeah, no, it's it's fucking awesome. Yeah. So <laughs> the fact that this guy found a hobby that he can be passionate about, regardless if it's if it's successful or not, yeah. is a good thing. His wife, it sounds like his wife is starting to complain because like, she's like, yeah, when it started, it was fine. But then like the engine parts are really expensive. He keeps, like, spending the money on the damn helicopter parts. I mean, if I were her, I'd be a little more scared that the first time he takes this thing up in the air, he is going to die. But no, I don't it's know. not going to be all the bystanders that die because you need to turn it on and all the parts are just going <laughs> to fly out. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. Don't stand close. Directed by John Landis. Oh. America braces for possible French fry shortage after poor potato harvest. Mm, not really a bad story. I don't care. I do love French fries, but if they were gone and I was forced to not eat them, yeah. probably a good thing. We'd all be better off, especially me. But also, like, I think currently as it stands, you go to any restaurant, you order French fries. They, they, bring, way too many. they bring you a fucking bucket of yeah. fries. I'm like, I just want, like, a couple fries. They're like, oh, we don't sell a couple fries. We <laughs> sell you an entire fucking, like, horse trough full of fries. The worst part about that, too, is it's like... There's no middle ground. Yeah. So, like, at a lot of restaurants, it'll be like, yeah, you get a side of fries for $6. Yeah. And it's like, they bring out, I, literally, there's a place by me that brings a bucket of yeah, fries. Yeah, like, I just want, you know, like, the, like a like, McDonald's get, like, small two, fry, just I a want little $2 bag. $2 of this $6 yeah. fry. Oh, it's so it's, And you're just throwing it away, too. Yeah, yeah, it all just, if I, either I don't have self-control, and I eat all the fries, and I feel like shit for, like, two days, yeah. or I have self-control, and it just goes in the fucking landfill. And this is the problem. This is the restaurant's fault. Because there's so many fries being wasted that now there's going to be a shortage and yeah. we don't have any fries stocked up. Yeah. They keep just throwing them away. Yeah. Well, I hope we all learn something. Uh, uh, sweet potatoes, are those actual potatoes? I mean, they're a similar species. Well, are those running out? I don't know anything about that. Because they're good as fries, too. I mean, there's a lot of similar. You can, uh, you know, we run out of potatoes. We can use, like, taro roots or uh, ube, the purple fries. Get out yeah. of here, fucking 
Go back to Europe. <laughs> Boom. Well, those, both, both of those things I just listed are Asian potato uh, varieties. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> just... <laughs> we'll go back to Asia. Uh, I, my, you know, the, the American fry, it should either be so thick that it's just mashed potatoes inside or so thin that it's just fried air with a potato taste. Yeah. That's the way we like it here. I mean, you can, like, if you're at home, you're, you got a, if you got your frying pan, it's got, like, some hot oil in it, just go into your cupboard, pull out some, like, some flour, just, like, throw it in the dish, let it sizzle for a few minutes, boom. You got, you got yourself a fried treat. You know what the worst, most wasteful um, type of fry is? I, I can't remember if it was, like, Steak and Shake that does it, but, like, the tiny shoestring ones that are so thin, they're just yeah. like, what are you doing? Who the... You have to eat it, like, by a handful. You can't even, like, pick it up one at a time or yeah. anything like that. It's such a waste. I like the the um, Chick-fil-A. The waffle fries. The waffle fries. Yeah. yeah. Now, pretty, there's some value. Pretty good. And now you don't have to feel bad. Wow. Well, because they stopped sponsoring. Uh, they stopped giving money to anti-gay, all those. Anti-gay uh, companies. Yeah. Well, they, they say that, and they have said it in the past, so we'll wait and see. I mean, I was still eating. <laughs> I, still, I still eat it all the it, time. My, the chicken's good. I, I never, ever turned down a Chick-fil-A, regardless yeah. of where they were politically. We both have the ability to look the other way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, there's a bunch of terrible products out there, but uh, yeah, sorry. There's not a lot we could do about it. On the one hand, yes, you're right. It is it's bad what they're doing. Yes. On terrible. the other hand... That's some damn good chicken. Yeah, it's a very good chicken sandwich. Damn. Moving on, defense attorney apologizes for Anchorage dentist who pulled tooth while riding a hoverboard. I'm a cool dentist. Yeah. Yeah, and also, it, it, this is just one part of a large lawsuit. It sounds like he's a, a very a shady dentist. person and also a terrible dentist. Like, he would, he would like, mix up the teeth. So it's like, oh, you're supposed to pull this one out and pull out that one. You're supposed Whoops. to put a cap on this one get the wrong one. Uh, he's riding a hoverboard just like, look at this. Uh, and the biggest, the, the main source of the lawsuit is... Um, he was running this like Medicaid scam where uh, he was putting patients under when he didn't have to because mm-hmm. yes. he figured out you That's could... That's typically one of the worst things yeah. for malpractice because yeah, uh, you... they always lead to uh, really bad stuff. Like, yeah. uh... It's not you should really sexually abused. You really shouldn't put people under unless they really need to and that's what he was doing. Also uh, extremely dangerous. Uh, yeah. Uh, just straight up uh, abuse aside. Yeah, anesthesia is not to be fucked with. No. Uh, so yeah, yeah, he was like, he's like, oh, we can earn like $1,000 more per procedure if we... Just give people unnecessary amounts of anesthesia. Well, he got caught. Yeah. And uh, yeah, don't make up. Probably shouldn't make be a dentist. Funny YouTube videos when they start waking up. So. I swear to God. <sighs> Willie Nelson says he's given up smoking grass because of health issues. Hey, good for him. Damn. Yeah. That's got to be crazy. Like coming out of forty years of high. Yeah. Well, yes. Immediately after, yes, the cravings are. People say that there isn't a physical addiction. I, there's not a physical addiction. There's a mental addiction. Uh, it took I me a mean, while to wean myself off the it, pot. It definitely affects your brain chemistry. Yeah. And, and when you become used to that, like, yeah, it's 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 a, a little, it's not fun. Yeah. Uh, I hate to be the bearers of bad turkey. news. Total, total jerks. We both do enjoy marijuana from time to time. But uh, when I was smoking a lot, it was hard to stop. Yeah. Even when it was giving me crippling anxiety. It took a while to get off of it. I was, uh, when I studied abroad in college, like, uh, the summer before, I was, like, high 24-7. Yeah. And then I'm flying to another country where I... Well, it's the easiest have, way to do it. But, yeah, the first, like, week or so was not the best. Yeah. Didn't didn't love the feeling of suddenly being completely not high yeah. all the time. Well, I don't know. This is, uh, you know, a big moment. For yeah. the uh, pot culture, he's leaving. An icon has Snoop retired. Snoop Dogg is still there, though. Yeah. So. I don't see why, because his, his whole thing, he's like, it was giving him, like, lung issues and stuff. I'm like, come on, Willie, just, you can he's still. Have edibles. You can still have edibles. Yeah. But for a lot of people, uh, the, 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 the smoking, it is kind of the therapeutic part as well. It's part yeah, of it. Yeah. Part of the whole process. Hmm. Nothing like rolling a bunch of blunts or joints for the day and yeah. smoking them throughout. Well, yes. well, Godspeed, Mr. Willie Nelson. Mm-hmm. German Army apologizes for posting Nazi uniform as part of retro fashion series on Instagram. Yeah, this was, I don't know how. And who could forget Hugo Boss? Like, the only, either, okay, either the person running their Instagram account is, like, actually a fucking Nazi, or is, like, a fucking 18-year-old with, like, literally no knowledge of history. It was just like, what? Hmm, sweet uniform there. Because, yeah, they posted it's like, in, like, it's not even, like, a plausible deniability uniform, because there were a couple World War II German Army uniforms that, like, weren't covered in swastikas. This one had like three visible swastikas in the photo. 
And it's just like, wow, like, yeah, the German uniforms were pretty, <laughs> very couture back in the days. Hugo Boss designed this. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Hashtag retro. Kirby Enthusiasm already made this joke. It goes up and down. I and just love right. it. <laughs> Hungary's far-right government pulls out of Eurovision Song Contest because it is too gay. Uh, we should probably clarify for the American viewers that the Eurovision competition is gigantic. Yeah. Huge. It's uh, it's basically like every country in the world except America competing in like a sort of like tournament of songs. I don't yeah. really understand it, but every every year you get some fucking crazy performances out of it. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a big point of national pride for a the lot of countries, wins, especially yeah. in like Eastern Europe. Um, yeah, the, pro the reason we're not invited is because we would fucking crush it. America is best export is entertainment. We all know that. Yeah, it's pro it's probably better that we're not involved. You know, let let Eurovision, let them have it. Unfair. You guys have Billie Eilish. What was that one band like six years ago, Winnie Pooh, where it was uh, they all had like fur masks and like the drummer was hanging upside yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that shit was tight. There was a like, Guar style band that won it one year. Yeah. So yeah, they, it gets fun. But I yeah, it's, it's it's fun if you like shit like The Voice or whatever. This blows it out of the water. Yeah, but mm -hmm. the the fucking killjoys over in the Hungarian government, they think it's too gay. Like, yeah, it's a fucking song contest, you fucking weirdos. Of course yeah. it's a little bit gay. Their, well, I, their idea of a song contest would probably be some, like, fucking folk music just singing on top of a mountaintop. Boring. No one wants to see that shit. <laughs> Boomer. Put some pizzazz into it. Yeah. Pizzazz is now banned in Hungary. The gay parts of, like, live entertainment are the best parts. Mm -hmm. So there you go. New Zealand develops world's first low methane sheep. Finally. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, there's more sheep there than people, mm -hmm. supposedly. And, uh, yeah, they've, like, I mean, all it is is, like, selective breeding, but they started, like, you know, they'd, they'd go through and, like, wait for the sheep <laughs> to <laughs> just put a little meter by their asshole. They're like, oh, we got one here. Pretty low methane. Yeah. Kill the rest of them and bring the, bring the low methane one over here to get fucked. They did this, like, long enough that now they've, they've got, like, a... A family of sheep that sustainable sheep. Yeah, yeah. And they uh, they've done a bunch of like testing on their digestive systems and figured out like a food that makes them fart way less. Yeah. Why aren't it's they doing this deal. with cows? I don't know. They should. Yeah. They really should because wow. cows is a big problem. I don't think like sheep are that much of an issue, but yeah, if they can do this with cows, not Save only would it be good for the earth, but I would I would enjoy driving up. I-5, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, through Central California a lot more than I currently That way you do. could only smell the murder and not all the farts. Yeah, I wouldn't have to uh, roll my windows up miles ahead because, you know, if it's too late, it's too late. Yeah. I'd be able to drive through Central California with my windows down, breathing in that sweet methane-free air. Yeah. Canada town of Asbestos, Quebec looks for a new name. <laughs> I bet there, there's probably so many locals who are like, Pry it from my cold, dead, asbestos-ridden hands. That's the thing. It's like they it's named a it. It's a point of pride for sure. They named it that because it was like, I, at, the, at one point, it was like the biggest asbestos mine in Canada. No. Yeah. It was like where all of Canada's asbestos came from. Point like, of pride. We're going to name this town after our biggest export mm -hmm. asbestos. A, a miracle substance. That could never, <laughs> never go wrong. It has so many uses and no downsides. Absolutely. So we zero. shall christen this town Asbestos Canada because. The world trusts asbestos, and the world will trust our town. Yes. Asbestos only lets you live the good years of your life. Yeah. None of those boring elderly years. Well, best of luck to them. I'm yeah. sure they'll come As up best with of something. Luck. Yeah. And final headline, Indian man paints pet dog as tiger to frighten monkeys. It's very cute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so. apparently it works. Yeah, monkeys, uh, they, they, they know those stripes. The, the farmer should just paint himself as a tiger. Or just get a stuffed tiger. Yeah, he said his neighbor did that, and he's like, I guess the movement, I'll do you one better. The movement probably helps. Yeah, so yeah. he gets he gets his dog professionally uh, dyed, lasts about a month, and yeah, it's great. Those, those damn monkeys. I'm also happy that he's doing it uh, with a professional instead of just spray painting his dog. Well, I don't know. He might be. <laughs> but it is, it is like a permanent dye job. It takes a while to come out. Yeah. All right, well. Good for him. Yes. Anyways, that's it for today's episode. Be sure to check out uh, our most recent exclusive podcast if you're a member of the Patreon or a YouTube member. Also, uh, check out our most recent episodes. We have a new episode of News Dump. And we also have, uh, what was the other one? Let's put in uh, the holiday, weird holiday ads. 
But you know what? You can just Family go to our, friendly. our channel and watch whatever you want. And you also can. you should go there and subscribe if you're not already subscribed because yeah. it's getting ridiculous here, this hair. Bye. Bye.